I'm going to open the meeting at 6.34. Call the order. Additions to the agenda. I don't see any from the select board memo. Does anyone else have anything? No? Wow, that's really too bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, review of minutes. Do, do we have it? Um, we don't. Oh, no. Okay. We're working on it. Wow. Okay. No minutes. Uh, public comment. Do you remember the public, sir? Or are you probably? I could either do it now or at seven thirty when you get to the town garage club. That's what I came to the public comment about. Okay. Which well, well, we have a we have that on the agenda. So. Yeah, the town garage. I, I you can you can comment then, or do you want to comment now? Up to you. You can comment then. I can comment now. Sure. All right. So um, well, you don't take too too long. Four minutes. Four minutes and stretch it, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll work. Okay, with four minutes. It. Okay, so um, should I just sit here? Yeah. You can you can say anywhere you want if you feel more comfortable being up here. I'm comfortable <laughs> anywhere. All right. So I know you guys have been doing a lot of hard work. Uh, I, I I wouldn't say that. But well, it seems to me I've watched meetings on Zoom. I'll, I'll, I'll take all the credit for the hard work. <laughs> he doesn't want to take it. He doesn't want to take it. I'll he take it. To fill out his resume, saying he's working. Yeah. So there okay, you So public comment is okay. this. I'm concerned about the cost. Yeah. Of course. Yes. And I want to make sure that we're not letting the architects run wild here. No. Then there was an original proposal that was. Uh, put aside for something fancier, and I would I was curious about what the original idea was that you brought to them. I think I got that right, and um, and the numbers that could have been associated with any of that. And uh, last summer when I learned that this was going to take place, I realized a long time ago what those guys were suffering and over there it was ridiculous, and they need something better. But I thought, why don't we just use something that somebody else has built? Like first year, you just build a town garage, and why don't we just do that? Well, I was advised that our circumstance is unique, and that maybe we should, uh, you know, let the designers show up and tell us what we need. So I got to thinking, as I do, because I'm old and been doing shit for a long time. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, the idea of building a box to put all the trucks in, that you're gonna store them in and work on them as well, may not be the best solution. Being a shop guy, the last thing you want is to be laying under a vehicle and have some Nimrod open the door and the cold air blasts in them. It's horrible, you don't want that. So, and this whole energy element has come up and I thought, well, these trucks that are being stored vehicles, including the front end loader, should be in a separate building. And there should be a building designed for the office and creature comforts and the repair facility should be in that structure. And the other structure should be kept at 40 degrees to keep the vehicles thawed out, but not corroding as much as they would if they were at 65 or so degrees. And that way, um, there could be a lower energy impact. Okay, keeping to my four minutes, uh, heating with heat pumps seems overly idealistic to me. I don't know everything, but I've been watching the show for a long time. You really want to go down that road? Let's heat the office with heat pumps, but we burn wood in Vermont. We, and I know carbon neutral is important. I don't, um, this, I think we should be heating the building with pellets. But I don't know everything. But I'm just being public comment. This is what it's going through my head, so I'm sharing. And uh, I could go on for an hour. Oh, okay. thought. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um, the update. On the time project I don't believe really have anything on this, but about some time there, if, we, if you want some answers to some of your observations. I'm not sure I want to like. We don't have anything getting us a couple of details. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 I just want to respond on one thing though, because there hasn't been any. You're thinking that we moved from a lower cost building to something. Yes, I thought that's what took place. No. Okay. No. 
We're, we're still designing the building. We haven't come up with any edit design. Well, I'm, I'm, we put it out for bid for a, a, for a sketch design, and then we have someone that's making us a design. Is there any way to get more information out to the public? Well, we don't have much more, but okay. we can. I understand. No, I'm just going I mean, to go. Point, there's going to be at a point where we have more to present to the public. But that's what I thought. Yeah. But we're not at that point. Okay. Before before any decisions are made. Well, we're not that's the point of right? what we're doing right now is to get a design that can then go to the public. Yeah. That's 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 exactly what I'm saying. Right. Is that, there wasn't words, any kicking to the curb of a low cost design. Okay. okay. So in other words, there's so you're not going to be you're not going to be saying, well, this is what what it is. Vote on it or not. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be. There's going to be that's, that's that's actually what does happen that, that, at that some happens. point, but there will be some sort of information. The information that you present when you're trying to sell it to the public is a design. Right. And that's, we're moving towards that. We're moving through that process on making a design. All right. Great. All right. We'll take what you said, and we have um, an architect working on the design. So one more thing I have to say. So architects. I've been um, fixing solar for a long time. Yeah. Not I didn't do a lot of installs, but I've been doing repairs for a long time. And what I've learned is putting solar on the roof of a building is seems very normal it's a bad plan okay because you're putting one complex system on top of another complex system and you can't get to the back side to fix it and there's no reason to do it there's no cost advantage put the pvs on a rack along the road it, it's not like somebody's uh, residential property where you're having to protect the aesthetics this is the commercial space you don't need to um, make something that's going to really look dazzling on the town website. You want something that's going to work, okay, and not need uh, expensive maintenance in the future, right? Okay. Okay. So, not to trade down, but thank you for coming. So yeah. we got to move on to our next. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so we'll definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you so much for your minutes. And um, yeah, I'm sure not wanting to um, be like complaining. Well, that's okay. You're right. <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Oh, no, that's why we're here. No, no, that's no. <laughs> okay, but we're listening. But right, um, nothing's final of yeah. yeah. any kind. All right, I'm okay. going to watch the show. Thanks right. again. Hey, Cheryl. Yeah. Did you thank you. Um, so the next item on our I agenda. Have a, I have a, I have a what? comment. Yeah. Um, just observing some of the some of the last meetings, I think it would behoove us to um, when we're going to have guests or where we're going to have people speaking on an issue, try to front load it. Sometimes we're we're moving things around and that's not coming up till eight thirty or eight fifteen. And we're having somebody that's coming in to address a certain issue. Having, we don't know who's going to address. Okay, address. okay. But, but occasionally we wait for people. Okay, and Just I do try to load it when I have people coming. I don't want to have the town clerk. Yep. That's Done. usually what dictates the. Done. The you're 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 people. aware of my. Yeah. Thank you. I'm done. Anything else? Absolutely not, <laughs> Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. Sure. Discussion on green burials. John Booster's in. We got some people, town people, tuning in. John Boucher. Like yeah, great. Yeah. I also have some information town residents to share with me, but just kick it off with what you have to say. Oh, I was asked to be here. I thought there was questions for me. There are questions. Okay, fire away. <laughs> uh, what does it entail to for East Montpelier to be doing? To, to uh, incorporate green barrels in that yeah. country. Uh, yeah. So there's some challenges there, and one of the base ones have to do with yeah. Um, so, well, Montpelier has a best one. They were very yeah. Montpelier does. Yeah. yeah, I just read an article where they yep. and Cal had it in there. Yeah. And Cal, and there's a lot of town coming. Yes. Uh, so, we, yeah, I'm sorry, just for the sake of folks out there, the video, who would you say that you are John Boucher yeah. of the yeah. Cemetery Commission? Uh, so, yeah, chair okay. of the yeah. committee. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so the biggest challenge again is getting back to the winter time. I had a uh, conversation with our Secretary Sexton, and he doesn't have work to do it. He's got the equipment to do it, um, yeah. no one to do it. Um, and then the other challenge is it's just more uh, administratively uh, getting rid of our rule on our books about yeah. uh, about um, vaults. Yeah, and those two really, those two items are your challenge. I missed the word there. Get rid of the rule about vaults, burial vaults, burial vaults, which you can do. 
seventy thousand something Vermont have done it. Right. 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 Yeah. So it's not a honorary. No. Uh, is it an ordinance change? No, no, I think it's, it's going to be a rule change in yeah. the cemetery. Yeah, you oh, have okay. to change it, yeah. but the rule, I think, is piggyback on the state. Yeah. No. no. Mm -hmm. So that's it, town specific? Yeah, some history there, like, you know, small burial vaults came in back yeah. in the 60s. Yeah. And, you know, we've sort of evolved into, you know, from a point where we were thinking that these people are down there, that yeah. it's you know, sealed and ready. Yeah. To Ready to rise up, and, and it's just you know, yeah, we've evolved into yeah. something different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think the day has come where perhaps we should look at this. Well, absolutely. Is there any reason why it'd be more challenging East Montpelier than Montpelier, or is there any more? So or um, less? I mean, it seems like it would be. I would argue it's probably less challenging. Right. And, and one of the reasons is, is um, the Odie Cemetery, which is kind of our the only active cemetery next to the flat and easy access and. Um, so I would argue it's probably less challenging. Another yeah. another um, specific to Doby is there's some uh, issues with ledge, um, and um, this portion of that cemetery we can't necessarily use uh, with, with a burial vault, which is simply not a form where we otherwise could with uh, with no vault. Yeah. Well, with the natural green barrier, don't bury uh, you know those people. Right. You um, need need that extra. Yeah. So basically, um, Happy Gilly was a month later. And he's was against it to start with, but he's on board now because um, he has gone to Montpelier and advocated one way or the other. Uh, but at the entrance of Greenmount Cemetery in Montpelier, is a white marble building inside of six bodies on a visit in early April. They were being stored by a local funeral director. When Happy started working at the cemetery 35 years ago. The vault building was full of dozens of caskets during winter months. That's no longer the case. Right. So, a lot of it is, you know, the cremation because people get cremated now, so they don't need to win a storage. But the green burial is uh, is a viable alternative to cremation and for the vaults because people feel it uses less carbon to a right. natural burial right. rather than even cremation. Correct. So, we have to get on board from the session. So the process is of changing the rule about the vaults. Is I think one. it's so I, I've approached the board in the past. Yeah. And, and there's some some member changes and, and um some people were certainly against it before where I, I think it's uh commission can get together and I I, I believe we can have another discussion on this and it's a productive discussion. So you would do it internally in the committee as you need right. select board. That's a lot of, I mean, yeah. so our, our role is, as a committee is to kind of discuss issues with the cemetery, then bring it to select board mm -hmm. and with our recommendation. Okay. Oh, and it's mm -hmm. up to you, folks. Can agree with that? What, uh, just briefly, what, 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 what are the objections? What, what are the um, objections? Well, I think um, before there was some concerns about physically doing it. Um, we had members that were both with Sexton and on, you know, on board itself. So, the, no, the secretary commission. Commission. Yeah. Commission. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I actually yeah. used better term. Right? So, yeah, because yeah. I don't remember it ever coming to the because yeah, it doesn't sort of. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to search my memory and I've been on the site for about 12, 15 years. I'm like, I don't think we have no here. But anyway, but that being said, uh, we need to know what the process is moving forward. Right. That's basically it. That's basically it. And, okay. and uh, so you guys get together, yep. make a recommendation to us. And so I will I will have, you know, when we meet again in April, I will definitely have that on the agenda. Bob, yeah. And, and then, uh, so a follow up to, to Carl's question. Right. Procedurally, we don't have to do anything with the state. No. We can we no. can approve this all internally within East Montpelier. Yes. <clears throat> yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, I'm even going to talk to Pat Healy just to. Yeah. Just to oh, yeah. check check again, but I, I don't think there's any any change of use or thing. There, there really is good... He um he did a training for clerks yeah. this fall and <laughs> went through a lot of that sure. stuff and uh, it was yeah. it was new and it was also yeah. much it's he he described the process so that we now understand it in a much clearer, easier way. Um, yeah. Because in some instances, clerks have to do burial transit permits if yeah. someone passes away in their home and wants to transfer themselves. Uh, well, their family wants to transfer. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is about there. You can make a lot of money. So in any case, yeah, um, I 
as a member of the cemetery committee, I don't see why we wouldn't change the rule yeah. to allow them. It's just the way that modern cemeteries are, are going. Yeah. Are there any objections to the on um, no, I just wanted to make sure that there's a minute before we moved on for um, the public in case there are any questions. I know that there's some interested public members here on the Zoom. Yeah, there are some interested public. In case anyone had a question. Are there any questions from the oh. members of the Or comment? If they're here, are they here for the, you're here for this issue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So lastly, I'll, I'll add is, is uh, these ceremonies, these areas, they tend to be very uh, intimate, smaller, and some of these uh, meaningful things you have. Mm -hmm. well, nothing wrong with that. No, no, yeah, not at all. Yeah, I'm just trying to the day that we all to find out if there's an objection. And and in my mind, we need to move forward. Since you sat at a couple of the the committee meetings, what were the cemetery? What were the cemetery? Those members on the cemetery committee that had objections. What were the specific objections? Uh, one was you know leaching into the groundwater. I think the physical work of doing it. Okay. Um, they're not really legit. So the reality is there are some very ancient, like say ancient Civil War era areas in there already. Uh, before we have long before pulse, long before uh, ashes to ashes. Ashes, yeah. And so thing. on the groundwater, uh, Gina has kindly provided us with a statute uh, around cemetery right. and, and this possession right. of remains right. of the dead. And there are some detailed uh, requirements for the burial boundaries of a new or expanded cemetery with regard to uh, wells, uh, water supplies, et cetera. Um, but I assume that with everything else, there are some cemeteries that are grandfathered in. So I'm wondering, what do we know about our cemeteries and groundwater supplies? I don't know much. But uh, in this, we're not changing the use of the cemetery one day. Right. Right. And a pine box will rot theoretically. Mm -hmm. Theoretic, theoretically. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And it's not just pine box. Whatever. There's other sure. um, we've been doing that for a month, thousand. Try to bury it. It's just truck. <laughs> Wait, you've been with the current regulations in place? Well, not this, not our cemetery. You know, got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. so almost every um, community around us is now, are now doing the natural green bear. Everyone. Yeah. So, so well, while you're here, I mean, we're talking about green burials, which I understand is putting a body into the ground with without a ball. It's a, it's a shroud. Yeah, and ball, no, 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 no ball. Right. Um, right. It's with uh, without a ball. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea is just to keep your the minimal environmental impact. impact. But, then, but that's that's an intact body going into the ground intact. There's also legalized in Vermont recently what the statutes call natural organic reduction or composting of human remains. And I'm just curious if um, if the cemetery committee here has been approached by anybody to uh, to spread any uh, natural organic production remains. No. So there's no facility that does that. Yeah. Okay. And it may be something that they just spread on their own property. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So you end up so that method, which you just referred to, you end up with about a yard right material. Right. It's composted somewhere else away from the cemetery and then in, you back up the yeah from the wings of the house and this is it right right yeah. 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 it is yeah. okay well we have no objections yeah, yeah. Okay. so so what i'll do next is uh at our meeting in in the end of march first of april i will make sure this is on our agenda yeah we can vote i'll get a motion and then the approach you know in theory, because I'm, I'm still learning, um, we can override the cemetery committee, sure, yeah. the select board. Yeah. In theory, yes. Whether you would want to or not, if they objected, yeah, I guess we, we could override. It. Well, no. If they objected, we can still. Mm -hmm. The select board has the overall overriding authority. If they said we don't like it, yeah. So the cemetery committee comes to the select board and we said, well, we don't agree with your findings. 
in, in theory. But I guess that's that's with anything almost. We're we're on board. Okay. And I think everyone we have changed personnel. Yeah, I, I think everyone else has. I, uh, I see. Yeah. Once you re I I think that it's not going to be an issue. Okay. I don't think it is. Yeah. Is there any more doomsday scenarios you want to <laughs> No, I'm just I'm just. I mean, I like that, but you know, after a while, uh, like, apparently, I'll pull up. Apparently, no one like it, but that's okay. I'll, I'll accept your objection. So just, you mentioned a rule change. Is there anything else procedurally we need to do? You guys had your meeting. You make a recommendation. It comes to us as a rule change, and that's it. We have a, we have a number of rules, and we've actually been working on making some updating updating of our rule change. So I think what we would do is present the entire set of yeah, rules and regulations that we need all of the changes on. And so, but it is a fairly simple procedure. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Okay. You got it. Yeah. Can you have any questions? No. Okay. <laughs> right. You can email them. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's see what our next consideration of quote to digitize the flooded land survey. Perfect. Okay. Do you have a to? I do. And you're the lead off person on this. I, I hope so. Well, it looks like I see your name here. Right. So um, for a number of years, we've been looking for a way to digitize our survey maps mm -hmm. that are part of our permanent records uh, for land records. We have a number of survey maps floating around all over the office, but there are certain ones that are recorded um, and that are considered permanent record. The it started quite some time ago um, with a grant that I was able to get. Uh, we were able to purchase a wide format printer scanner. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for us um, amongst moving it and it becoming not level and now non-functional. It well, really it hadn't been used to be doing to be right. it. It hadn't been used for that either <laughs> anyway. It was more being used for zoning. It, it wasn't set up in a way that was going to be able to work for us and now it's broken. So um, I'm now looking at furthering this project and making it happen using basically the preservation money that's in my preservation account to get this done. Um, I did go out and get two quotes. There are not many companies that provide the service. It's kind of a niche thing. Um, basically the, the cliff notes version is Avenue is our current supplier for our land records um, software and service. They have been exceptional and very responsive with their customer service for us, especially in the last year and a half. Um, they have proprietary scanning software that they can use to help clean up some of the older maps that might have creases or marks in them before they were put in uh, the plastic mylar sleeves for protection. I was able to actually talk with um, the Brattleboro City Clerk. They had had Avenue perform a service at, um, well, it wasn't at their office. They actually had to have their records leave the building, as I will need to, um, and get them all scanned, indexed, tagged, and sent back. Um, they actually still use Avenue every six months if they haven't gotten three or more maps recorded in six months. They send what they have every six months to Texas, have a scan sent back. Um, so they continue using them. I actually would probably prefer to uh, use CW in Barry or whoever is available in the Montpelier once they get set up to go and just use a flash drive for the, for the easy ones. That would be something that I would be able to do on an ongoing basis, keeping this forward. But having 778 maps, um, it's just not practical to have somebody standing there, taking them out of the sleeves, putting them through a scanner. Um, it's, been, it's a huge job. So the good news with Avenue is they're a trusted vendor. They are my high quote. However, they're going to give me end-to-end -end service. And what I mean by end-to-end -end is not only are they going to scan these things, they're going to upload it into the system. They're going to index every single map, which means I've got a book that's a, literally an index 
and they're going to tag all of those documents so that we can find them. That's the most important part because there's no point in digitizing if we can't find stuff. Yeah. Um, Cofile is another great company. We use them for our more hard copy preservation needs. <clears throat> they are new to this niche, seem to have the same type of uh, system going and um, equipment available. They didn't have references available because they have just started doing this. They're willing to provide a thumb drive. Mm. Just give me a thumb drive with all my files on it. Um, I would feel a little more comfortable with that if I knew that there was an S, you know, an SFTP online sort of way to, as a backup. Um, they uh, would not be able to get this job in production. They say maybe it would be done by the end of the calendar year. So, Avenue is telling me they can have it all done by the end of the summer. Um, and really, they're both trusted vendors. I like the fact that Avenue is the one that I'm working with right now. They know our system, they own our system. And the fact that they've got the extra software to just kind of make sure that our scans are clean, because when you're taking a 24 by 36 map and bringing it down, condensing it down to an eight and a half by 11, you want to be able to be sure that people can actually read the darn thing. Um, so that, that was pretty important to me. So my request tonight of you folks is to, um, if you're if you're feeling like this is a worthwhile project, and I hope you do, that you will authorize Gina to sign off on the agreement with Avenue so that we can get the ball rolling. I have a couple quick questions. I got a question too. Okay. Where did the money come from in the restoration funds? The money comes from a four dollars a page. Okay, that's, that's not where all of it. Though. No, not all of it. I. You, this is where costs were charged for the digitization of the land records projects that have been done in the bank. When I came in, the, the funds was actually sitting at a negative. Um, some of your ARPA funds, some of the reclassification of ARPA funds that we've done have been what has replenished this fund. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted. So like, technically, we're using ARPA funds. Yeah. Ish. Okay. To yeah. to do this, and some um, of it's from the yeah. This this, this was like a negative eight thousand dollars when I started with the town, and it was something that I knew with our funds out there. That is one of the reasons I proposed that we reclassify some of yeah. the the digitizing digitizing of the records too, right? Okay. So that we could replenish this fund. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay, that, that was my first question. Um, oh, is, sorry. is that's yeah. okay? I'm, I'm happy that you were able to okay. take the spot. Okay. The, um, is there any ongoing maintenance fees or fees going forward on a yearly basis? We actually uh, um, we're actually paying now for the map office that is on the system because we had anticipated having the scanner. We were going to have the maps available, so we've been paying for it in our eight hundred and or eight hundred and sixty dollars a month. So that's not going to go up. So that's not going to change. So it'll still be eight hundred. Eight hundred sixty or whatever. Uh, so it's going to be ten, a little over ten, ten thousand five hundred or something a year. Yeah, it is. Okay, I mean, but that's for the cost of the use of the software and. Okay. The formatting. What happens if this company goes away? Is this PDF? Is this something that we'll own, or is it only work on their software? Um, it is a tip file. Okay. With a specific compression, um, and. The documentation that they provide is is compatible with other systems that are currently in the market right now. So it's not proprietary that if we lose them, for if we lose them, we could go to COT, we could go to Profile, we could go to anybody else who's, yeah. yeah. In fact, that's true for all of our records right now. You got a question? Yeah. Um, for the records force, under their quote, you noted that they had no ability to provide copies while the project is ongoing in the event re researchers need something. And for Avenue, you said that they would be taking our documents off site to work on them. So if someone comes in and wants to work on one of those documents, how, how would that work? What happens is um, if a researcher comes in and says, I need to see the Brazier map, then I would go to the index and we would conclude which Brazier map they were looking for. I would call Avenue 
they, they'll give me a special number direct to the scanning department. Okay. And I would say, I need this map. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay. And they're going to go just take it, mm -hmm. scan it, send it to me so I can get it to that researcher. Okay. The turnaround time is usually two to three hours, but okay. it's, oh, it's reasonable. Perfect. It's not at all scary. Mm -hmm. I'm not excited about having to send maps out, but yeah. the, the transportation that they use for these this RFID, you know, these great big black plastic crates that are sent along through the system. They've done this before. They have done this before. Yeah. Oh, good thing. Do we, is this a motion or is this? Just... Yeah. I'll make, I'll make the motion to uh, um, appropriate the funds for Avenue for $14,550 for this project. I'll make a motion. So, I said I'd like to make a motion. I'll second. Oh, is there further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, do have Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to get on this ball. Oh, it's well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, well, we're going to talk about the race. So, I thought you might not want to talk too much for the next one. As much. I think we need some sam I think we need some sampling for the next one. I'm not going to vote for the That's not a sampling license. That one's different. So the way oh, I'm only going to prove this with the sampling. The way that works, Here. we don't have to do anything. Not really up to us. No. Yes, but if we've got objections, we should voice them now. I have no objections. Really? I'm all in favor of alcohol. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions for Rosie or objections? I move to authorize the town clerk to approve the applications from Plainfield Hardware for a, are there multiple applications? Uh, yes, there's a, yeah. there's a liquor, a second class liquor and a tobacco. Yeah, I, I move to uh, approve the second class liquor license application for Plainfield Hardware. Well, let's get, on, let's get on the record here. A second. Okay, oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. A, a here, Robert's aye. rules. You're going to get so, so I made a motion for the second class liquor license application. I I don't like the way that tobacco kills our residents, and I did not make the motion to uh, approve the tobacco license application. However, I understand that businesses like Plainfield Hardware rely on that income, and it's important to have local businesses like that. But somebody else here to make that motion and second it, I will vote for it. Yeah, I agree with you. I also believe in freedom of choice. I'll make a motion to approve the Plainfield Hardware Tobacco License application. Yeah, second. I'll second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Oh, yes. Thank you, folks. Thank, thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Okay. As, as always, Rosie, thank you. Okay. So, I think we should move to the next item. Consideration of building resilient infrastructure in community 2022 grant application. It's a lot of words for the grant for the local hazard mitigation. 2022. Yeah, that's the year that they got the funds from the federal government. Uh, so, that is the title of the grant. Oh, this is the hazard. So, yeah, this yeah. is for the hazard mitigation plan. So, yeah. the, this is step one for me to approve the grant. Um, then I start working with the state so we can get an RFP out to hire a consultant to work on this. Okay. So, you need a motion for this? A motion for her. For, yeah. Come on, let's go. This motion. Let's get your let's get your names down. I uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, town administrator to send out an RFP. Um, sign the grant to sign the grant application, yes, yes. Right. that's right. Really, for the RFP, you guys know it's coming. I mean, once I just want to be able to keep moving this forward, so right. I don't really, we've never really done a motion for those in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just am letting you know that you know, if you have any concern, let me know. I will yeah. move forward with this, but we have no, we need, I, I have no concern. Yeah. I'll, I'll reword that. Uh, <laughs> 
I have no idea. I think you probably on this one you can speak for all of us. No, no, I'm not doing that. That's, 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 that's correct. You, that's can, correct. You, can, you, yes. can, you can speak for me on this. Oh, I never know. You're a loose cannon. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll second Zoe's so Okay. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the aye. Aye. All right. The aye is good. All right. So the next item is consideration of CAI technology tax map. Maintenance contracts for 2024 and 2025. This is the annual agreement for our online tax maps. No change in the cost. So this is just the renewal for this upcoming year. Yep. It's impressive to that any proposal for no change in the cost. Yeah, we're not the yeah. last year, so yeah. it's flat this year, though. So which is nice. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to authorize. The town administrator to sign the agreement on behalf of the select board. The agreement of the renewal between CAI Technologies and the town. <laughs> Very good. For what, for what time period? Infinity. Between April 1st, 2024 and March ah, 31st, ah, 2025. That's relevant. Okay. The year of our Lord. <laughs> oh, that was the town of East Montpelier. Yeah, oh, very good. Just now you're okay. What 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 state what state are we in? Washington County. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She's good. Okay. Yeah. No, that's the bottom of there. No, Northern yeah. Hemisphere. Yeah. yeah. We have a second. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Ah, okay. Discussion on town open positions, emergency management coordinator, CVRPC town representative, and a position on the So we have other positions, but of utmost concern is um, the emergency management coordinator. We will need to be updating our local emergency management plan uh, very soon, mm -hmm. and we do not have someone in that position. What do, what do we do if nobody steps by? I, I can keep posting these on our porch forum. Well, it's obviously no one else. Blow in the face, but no one responds. So yeah, this is this is someone who does not need to be a town resident, obviously, because we tell that it's not a town resident. I would assume. Mm -hmm. Even in uh, the area with the emergency services. Has you know, anyone from the emergency? That's kind of relevant. He was in Dallas. So, yeah, you know, he's and he's in the, the background of the fire department. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And he's no longer in that role either. Right. So and I'm not so sure we can move outside of East Hall. Well, and no is anyone from the emergency preparedness committee interested in this position? Um no. No. What the committee that we just formed? Yeah, the one that's on the agenda for consideration of their name change. Yeah, I got right next. Go You're meeting tomorrow, yeah. correct. Um it's and really are... good. This is the person that it, it's very tough. I provided you information from the state's website. The state gives a lot of information on the emergency management director. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of information on the emergency management coordinator. Basically, the coordinator is the one that kind of sets everything up for you ahead of time. They're the ones that are, you know, determining your risk, determining the needs of the community, hence the uh, completion of the local emergency management plan. Um, the emergency management director is the position that actually pulls triggers on the back line. Um, in general, I don't think we have a whole lot of organization in this area and protocols. So it's something that I think does need attention. The emergency preparedness committee is obviously doing very good work and they did meet um, with his pictures here uh, because he was the 2023 local uh, Emergency Management Director of the Year, um, Nick from Palace. Um, I read their minutes, and you know Nick was certainly instrumental in getting Palace much more formalized in their emergency management for two months. Um, so I, I'm really just coming to the board to say I, I'm not sure what to do here to recruit people into positions, but this is a vacancy that is a challenge because we have to have a name on the list. Hmm. Yeah. That is yeah. on my radar too. I mean, there's really not much to updating it 
to be honest with you. Um, it's a rather simple document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we brought that up? Have we brought this up with the fire department board? I don't remember. The, uh, I, mean, I don't think the fire department is well versed on our land. They came to me after the flood and informed me that I was in charge of emergency management response, and I said I am not the EMD for the town. So, um, no, I don't believe they have been involved in this process at all. Okay. Because they, I mean, when I think of people who would be good candidates for this, uh, they're all connected with the fire department. Yeah. People who've done it in the past connected with the fire department. You're still the emergency management directors, so you would kind of be keys to help identify who this person would be. You're the EMD and second EMD. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the question who do you want planning the plan that you all right. would need to execute on in right. the event of an emergency? Is there any compensation besides a handshake? Not in the past. Have we, and you've advertised these? I haven't advertised more than the district coordinator. Right. And from in conversations I've even had with people to say they'll really recommend you just blindly go out to your community for oh. this. Usually your EMDs are involved in. Yeah. Because again, <laughs> it's a. Uh, oh. Collaborative relationship. Oh, we got, we got a hand up. Yeah. Oh, hi. That's key. Oh, hello, Patty. Hi, Carl. Hi, everyone. So, hi. um, I just wanted Did to you say. say the record, please? Oh, sorry. It's Patty Giovara. Um, I'm a member of the emergency preparedness. Uh, oh, community. We, did, we did lost your sound lost here. Sound. It's a problem on our end. Uh, if you keep talking, then we'll know. You can count or something. We'll know when your sound comes back. <laughs> All right. So has my sound come back? Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying now? <laughs> Did they brief you on how to handle this? I guess maybe you can hear what I'm saying. So I'll put something in the chat. Okay. So oh, you can hear me now, can't you? I, mean, I can hear you just fine. We almost Why had we had you there for a moment, but apparently not again again. I'll put something into the chat. Um, there you okay, go. we can, can hear you, you can now. Hear me now. So yeah. uh, just to, maybe you'll be able to keep hearing me. I don't know. But um, anyway, I think that, um, you know, maybe um, the discussion that we have with uh, Toby and Seth tomorrow with the Emergency Preparedness Committee can, you know, kind of shed some light on this. I think one of the things that's important and I'm a, um, is to be clear on, you know, I mean, the emergency management coordinator, it's, it's important, but it really is kind of up to the emergency management director in terms of what the tasks are of the coordinator, right? I mean, there's very clear what the job position is for the um, uh, director, but not so much for the coordinator. So um, anyway, I think it's going to be important for whoever takes this to understand you know, sort of what, what the expectations are specifically from the emergency management director. But again, I, you know, it maybe it's something we can talk about tomorrow. I don't want to speak for the whole committee, but I don't think there's anyone on the committee that was raising their hand for this. But again, I think the conversation with Seth and Toby tomorrow will, will learn a lot as a committee and learn more in terms of you know, the expectations from Seth in terms of what the coordinator role is. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. I'm good. Hey, what other, other than the meeting tomorrow, if no one wants to step in, is there a list or other committees or people that we think would be responsible that might want to step up the plate without putting something out on I, I, I don't know. I think we're just going to have to set up a better system for emergencies. Now, the way we have it set up now is we have a website with a bunch of phone numbers. Right? Yeah, there's never been a plan. I, there's no. no. There's no plan for when we executed I mean, anything. When I, Try to reach out for resources, but I had a bunch of numbers to call, <laughs> which I called before and done. Right. 
So, critical. Yeah. Now, so I'm not quite sure how we're going to head on, but we'll figure it out tomorrow night. We'll have some good discussion, try to figure out better things. You know, so we don't have, I mean, we'll get a talk to Toby, Toby to make a certain meet. I believe so. Yeah, yeah well, that'd be great. Because he, he's pretty well for that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that, you know, we'll get up to speed a little bit more and we'll figure out what to do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the other positions you were talking about. So yeah, I highlighted two that are kind of a relief. We don't have any representation on regional planning anymore. And we haven't since Spencer uh, moved out of town. Um, but we had at the end of 22. That. We, that? At the end of 22. Right. But we, we had, had a vacancy in this position. Who was the uh, backup? Uh, Claris Clara, was, was the last. She's the alternate. Mm -hmm. the alternate. She doesn't have capacity to be there. Yeah, she was the last one when I was. The name. When I was on yeah. In our, we had um, what was her name? Julie was. In Julie was in the, in the, in the, yeah, we had a Julie was on the executive committee. Yeah, the, but she's done none. Yeah, she she has no interest. And then we had, you know, we had what? Before Julie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. before I remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> come on. Anyway. It was. Three brothers, remember? In town? That's one. Oh, Tim Carver. Tim Carver. Tim Carver. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. For years. Yeah. I've heard this common theme from town to town to town that there are just positions vacant. Mm -hmm. It's just really post pandemic. Right. Yeah. It's, you know. It's because we've never really been without a representative somehow. Yeah. That's true. Right. We've always had someone. And nobody from the planning commission wants to do it because they're kind of pissing that way. Great shots of Zach a few times. Yeah. Really? Planning commission's on uh, Humes, is it? Mm -hmm. On what? No, Humes. Really? There's, there's, there's a couple of resignations, so it's not a robust body at the moment. <laughs> it's like That's a, true. I mean, it's a common theme throughout. Common theme much. through towns. Yeah. So, just bring it to the select board if you have any ideas or if you know anyone and you're out. Yeah, these are. I usually just see cows all day and it wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> Probably not. Huh? Probably not. And you said this person doesn't need to live in town? The EMD? The EMD? I'm sorry. Uh, Toby did not. Yeah. If you have brought it to our event, then we will put on our thinking hats. Yeah. Usually call them thinking hats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking very strong. Well, the emergency management yeah. committee is doing a lot of good work. I mean, I've read yeah. the minutes, they're having very, very constructive conversations. So, you know, when I see Rachel there, um, it's, you know, I, they're, I think they're going to help get us in a direction, but, you know, we still have to get kind of those formalized plans because ultimately it's on the emergency management director to. Yeah. Initiate whatever plan we're going to be initiating. Right. Um, I think we've all seen that. I think emergencies are going to become more frequent. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. So we'll definitely have discussion tomorrow. Right. DBRPC, that's a really tough one. That needs to be really part of the planning commission discussion because they have the personnel, but yeah, the personnel is yeah. being quickly. We're finding that through a lot of talent positions. They're like empty. And the pipeline is not full. Do we have a new representative to the solid waste management system? Yeah, we can talk. John, John he's, well, he's, you all he's have to keep, keep John on there, but now we have John stepped away from that, then that would just add to it. He, yeah, he's, he's staying on he in that position for right. now. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I don't remember how much longer he has in town. He said that when he leaves town, he's not going to do it. Well, I know we left town. Yeah. Yeah, he's already out of town. He does yeah. sound like. But he, I think they have their meetings are remote, so I think he's yeah. still participating. He okay. indicated he would be still participating. Okay. So hey, he didn't say he was leaving for good, right? He's going to back to strength, Yeah. Really oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah I don't know. Okay. Because I don't know if this house is so old or what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's putting in the work. That, that's great. That's good representation. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we'll have to see because I think we'll get more communication from him if he plans to really settle up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other um, 
thoughts about other positions, Nina? Yeah. Like just just a quick question on the coordinator. If we're having that much of a struggle finding someone, is that critical to stipe in an option to attract people, or is that option to what? A, a, a stipe in some kind of a... It's not for the planning commission, obviously. What's that? It's it's not enough of an inducement for the planning commission. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's worth a conversation. I mean, I guess if you offer five hundred thousand bucks to somebody, might you're thinking might try to just a thought. Yeah. Yep. We all we're all doing this for the money. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> okay, so deputy three one S now, Bill. Oh, um, Michael, not doing Pretty much the position that we're making when I came in. This position was building. Well, it hurt. You can, you can wait. Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's a forest. Mm -hmm. He's been strained. He's been a lot of uh, old. He's young. So, anyway. Okay, so are we ready to go to the next? No one, I don't hear any uh, big suggestions coming from the peanut gallery over here. Uh, I'll take that. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so um, the next. Item here is consideration of name change for emergency planning committee to emergency preparedness committee. And that is enough. And controversy. What, what's the rationale? Yeah. They're in attendance. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? They're in attendance. So Carl yeah. asked the rationale. I'm asking the rationale. Yeah, the Carl and our vice chair has a question for the emergency planning committee about why you want to change the name. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Rachel and Patty. Can you hear us? Okay, so now Rachel is speaking, but we can't hear her. Ruby, Why do you want to change the name? Oh, she's in mute. Okay. This is quiet. Yeah, go ahead, um, Rachel. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we um Fairly early on, thought that emergency preparedness um, just described what we were doing um, more clearly than emergency um, emergency planning. Um, our, we're looking at being prepared for emergencies and making sure that town residents are safe and informed, and we're not planning. It just it just seemed like a a better description of what we felt we were doing. Patty, jump in, or Jennifer, if. You can be more articulate about it. Yeah, so you're not you're not planning to see clouds coming overhead to cause floods. <laughs> well, I yeah, I I think right. the thing is, I, not this is <laughs> so this is Patty speaking again. Can can you hear me this time? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So um so so the so here's the piece about it is that um so. So as 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 Rachel said, we are kind of like working on you know how to um, provide information to residents, how to connect people, how to you know be ready, where to get information, et cetera. But since the it, at least up till this point, I mean, and and not saying it couldn't change, but since the this committee that we're the committee is not responsible for the LEMP the emergency management coordinator, the emergency management director haven't been part of the committee, at least not yet, um, that perhaps that could change, but we just didn't want there to be confusion that it's the, that this committee was the, you know, preparing the LEMP or had the role of emergency management coordinator or director. So that, that was a piece of it. The way to step away. Yeah. Yeah. To clarify. Yeah. 
But also, <laughs> so. And, and again, that's something I, you know, I think we can discuss, right? Like there's, there's com committee members, um, you know, we, but there's, uh, there are committee members. We have a de facto chair um, of the committee at the moment. Um, so yeah, again, it, we just didn't feel like our role was planning from, you know, as, as would be described in the- Okay, okay. Uh, All right, well, Lamb, kind of a mouthful. You know, emergency it's management like director. Roll off the tongue a little better than that. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Is there, more there, labels on that? So well, that, that was going to be my, next, my question. Yeah. Um, is there any statutory reference to emergency planning committees that would be confused if the name was changed? No. Okay. This is a made up name. Yeah. 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 Okay. is still EPC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It yeah. Yeah. I, sounds sounds good. I mean, I, I I think it is a clarification that. There's helpful, and the committee wants it. I'm all for it. Sure. Okay, sounds good. I'll make a motion to approve the change of the name of the Emergency Planning Committee to the Emergency Preparedness Committee. Second. Okay. We have a second? Yep. Yep. Uh, any further comment? Or discussion? Or discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We passed it. Okay. The next item on our agenda is updated to the each monthly fire department meeting schedule. So Callis apparently requested that previously the schedule was a delegation of the second Thursday in April and August and the first Thursday in December, and they've requested to be consistent with second Thursday in April and November, which is actually what we've been doing here. So okay. must you if you have any concerns then is December 14th getting too late in December for us to want to do that, which it would be sometime. It could be any later than 14th. Exactly. Yeah. So it should be all right. Yeah. Compliance. You it always conflicts with another board I'm on, so that's yeah. why I, that's why I never can make these meetings. Oh. Community yes. harvest. That's the yeah. second. You're really nice. Is the fire, fire department okay with that, or is it next? He's who sent it to me. He's oh. to Jay, as you sent it to me. He oh. said this is what they want to do. Uh huh. Okay. And oh. again, this is what we did this year. Yeah. So. Okay. I, yeah. I, I don't believe that the chair is sincere in his regrets that I can't make the meeting. I think you're reading a lot into people's verbiage. Mm -hmm. No. Body language. You're saying that way. Body language. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll make a motion. We don't need a motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just letting you know. Yeah. Not having any concerns. FYI. Very good. FYI. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I can't Very object. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, update on the town garage project. Did we get it? A town representative hired. I haven't really seen the uh, oh, responses right. are due on the 15th, and I have not gotten anything. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Today is uh, 12. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Um, so, we've got three, and I and Andy Shapiro met with WLA on January 25th, and WLA wanted to have that meeting to just talk high level, um, really just ideas they had, questions they had. Um, the biggest question they wanted to ask us was they have considered or wanted to get our thoughts on shifting the building location to where it was closer to the road. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Access to the building creates a more efficient kind of yard for storing materials. Um, they think it can make it easier to build the building um, as well. So they really just wanted to know where we open to shifting the location of the building. And I think everyone would be open to whatever makes for the most efficient and effective design process. So um, uh, doing that would, you know, 
create a better potential for snow. The idea was you would kind of have a, the roof would be um, slanted Single towards pitch. the road, so it would be pitched to drop the Single snow. Pitch. Yeah, yeah, towards the road. So it's there are lots of reasons for it that it could make a much more efficient building. Yeah. Not only efficient in energy, snow, yeah. also efficient in cost. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So. Um, that so we basically were like, yeah, you know, whatever they are coming up with in their design, and again, they caveated that with, you know, of course, it all depends on the ground, and you know, there, yeah. there's lots to be figured out there. Um, and then yes, a roof angled that way would provide perfect access for solar panels if we decided to do solar panels on the building. Um, and then throughout that conversation, two buildings that kept showing us that they had designed, one was in Georgia and one was in Grand Isle. Georgia was a metal building, Grand Isle was a wood uh, building, so we had a trip. Um, I'm off on my days because I happen to get sick right yeah. trip, but thanks for the sure. did not. Um, but we took trips to Georgia and Grand Isle with um, David Roy, the lead um, architect of WLA, and walked both of those buildings, talked to the road foreman, road crew, um, about their experiences in the building. Um, Georgia's building is huge. It's significantly bigger, but um, certainly it was very fascinating to just see in action some of the things we sat in this room and kind of looked at my plans. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still, again, in the very early phases for this. I mean, the whole idea with this process is to get a design that could then go out to the general public, and with this design will be options yeah. Of what we can do and not do. Um, one benefit in seeing the Georgia building was we got to see the fire suppression system and tanks in place and see what those tanks look like. Um, and a really cute cat that they have in the town garage. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's a plus. I have pictures of the cat. Um, <laughs> and pictures of the garage, more pictures of the cat. Um, but uh, so still in the very early stages. So, you know, really it's, I mean, whenever they're asking, questions that are more involved. I mean, the idea is we're going to have an owner's rep involved that will then be bringing these things to you. Mm -hmm. um, but if no one responds to that request yeah. for bid, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. So it'll be something the board will have to address a, a future meeting. Um, but we'll see. If we'll see. Bids are due back on the 15th. So, um, and then Zoe, I know you're working with Guthrie to try to get some pictures and to try to give some people an understanding that may not understand why do we need a new town garage. Um, yeah, yeah. So Zoe has graciously offered to help you Thank know, you. take some some photos, sure. video, and whatnot. So hopefully we can. Make There's that some happen. way to like display that at town meeting. If I'm sure, yeah, yeah. we work with Rosie on that. Yeah, um, but yeah. So I mean, right now it's it's tough because I know residents are curious, but we're. We're in such a beginning stage with this. Andy has great ideas for energy efficiency that not only will be energy efficient, but could also save money too. So he was great in the meeting with WLA because yeah, no, he's good. It, mm -hmm. his ability to bounce off ideas, things yeah. that, and it's fascinating to watch the two of them talk because they, they kind of love the, the ideas each of them has. So um, so Andy being involved is, is great because he just has such a really good perspective on building design but then practical, energy efficient ways to approach it. So um, very thankful, I, you know, as, as much as he's willing to be involved, I think oh, no, we need, we need highly that. encourage Andy mm -hmm. to participate. Yeah, I mean, sure. absolutely. you know, I wouldn't want, he, you know, didn't really see, I mean, to go visit the buildings, um, you know, he can look at plans and yeah, get yeah. what he needs. That was really more for our own but he's been involved a lot. On. Mostly we wanted to see them because Georgia is wide open. You can see from one end to the other in that building. Um, and it was very interesting because the road foreman there actually commented and said he wanted it like that because he can see if a guy goes down for the wood to use. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting, you know, Guthrie kind of nodded his head because we did have someone recently have a medical emergency at the town garage. And it was an interesting perspective for someone else to say that. Well, the other very interesting thing that Georgia did, their building is a category four rated building. It is basically equipped for any emergency that you may have, natural disaster. Mm -hmm. um, so me coming from Florida, very similar to category four, being rated for a category four hurricane. Um, so, 
he said that was very interesting and that was something that they did with their building and we kind of took note of that because he said it provides a structure for their town in the event of tornado, you name it, their garage can actually be used as a shelter um okay. if need be and it is a secure safe building and they do not have a building of that rating anywhere else in their mm -hmm. town so just some interesting ideas that you wouldn't really think about until you start getting into this process so yeah cool yeah. Well, thank you for that and wla is great to work with them. um good. really good choice on the architect yeah so question um Moving the building closer to the road, what implications, if any, does that have for landscape preparation for the building? What do you mean landscape preparation? Uh, moving dirt, uh, filling in stuff, uh, making a flat surface for it. Uh, we didn't get into those level of details. Okay. Um, all of that site evaluation is part of what they're working on. Yeah. I mean, in general, all other things being equal, I think moving it closer to the road is advantageous. Yeah. Um, getting away from the wetlands and stuff yeah. like that. It also makes for a more open area of store of material. <laughs> It'll make it easier to navigate accessing material, and it actually makes it easier to get in and out of the building. They actually completely kind of reconfigured with this process. We have envisioned this kind of drive-through building. You would drive through kind of both cable ends was the original okay. thought. We would actually put all the doors on one end in this process and discuss accessing, because it's kind of difficult right now to get in and out of the garage. It's actually a bit nerve-wracking to pull out of that garage um, from the side of it that's close to the road. Um, I pull out really quickly when I make a left out of there um, because people are coming off the county quite quickly on Templeton. So if you don't come out quick, you don't have great line of sight. So this mm -hmm. would also help. There were there were lots of little ideas talking through mm -hmm. all of this. But um, any zoning implications by moving it closer, or it's just looking fine? Yeah, no, there wouldn't be any issues there. Okay, good. Thank you. So just stay tuned. I mean, that really they wanted to see if there was an absolute no appetite, don't want to move it. That was what they were really kind of mm -hmm. wanting that day. Mm -hmm. And then they got techie and stuff that they yeah. took care of. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's where we are. Okay. Sounds good. Um, well, thank you for the yeah. update. The next item is consideration of Washington Electric Cooperative Permit to construct 7,200 volt electric service line on Cummins Road. Are the are the um, um... <laughs> The neighbors or those that are close by, are they notified of this? Is there? I would imagine Washington Electric would notify, but that's something we need. Right. Yeah, kind of like if you get solar ground out, then your neighbors have to know. Is it following the existing line or not? It's following the existing line. That's what it looks like. Are they putting in new poles? We don't have any information beyond this. Yeah, just lack why, of, why they want to do it. Is it just lack of capacity? I would assume. Yeah. This is what, in my history, this is all we've gotten in the past. I've only brought one of these to you. Oh. So I don't know what the process is if you have right. questions. They come mm -hmm. in and they help us. I assume that WEC would not frivolously put in a 7,200 volt electric service line. I would assume so. There's a reason why you don't have a um a degree in electrical engineering. Say to follow existing telephone. Yeah. Yeah. But WEC would also be asking permission to cut and trim trees and brush that are in the road right of way where necessary in relationship to the line, but I assume that uh, there's only a instead of telephone line, but I assume there must be an electric line there. As well, do, in case they'd already have that permission. Do, do they ask us when they when they trim all the trees and mm. do everything? They don't come to select work. Why well, would they even come to ask us I mean, about this thing? I mean, trimming trees. Well, it's in the town right away. So, 
But they're saying that when they if you give us a uh, permit to them, then yeah, they, they, they will be stripping the trees, right? Yeah. They're not necessarily asking permission to put the trees. They're saying this is what's going to happen. No, no, I understand. Yeah. But basically, there's already a line there, but I think it's just a bell phone. But that here. It says just a bell phone end of right. And some of the electricity there. Yeah, but who knows how it gets there. Could be coming from the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How long? How long? I think this is fine. Yeah, I mean, it's following the existing line. Yeah. Not really going to change much. Yeah. Why are they even asking us? Because they're retired by the way. Yeah. They're retired by the way. They're yeah, they putting a bigger transformer in or something? Or? Well, I think on those, on those poles, the three between the line, there's no, uh, there's no watch electric line. Yeah. There's the telephone, which is their point or whatever. I don't think they said that. They're just increasing the size of the. Okay. Yeah. It's what consolidated. Is, Oh, okay. You see what I mean? I see. So, WAP is, is because it's in town right away, they have to communicate with us. Groovy. It has mm -hmm. the permission. Groovy. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Pretty sure that's what it is. Okay. okay. Can you have the original there? I do. I have something. The, well, uh, the original is actually in your stack of the uh, wall. Yeah. Okay. We're going to prove this by simply by finding no, the yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we, we will do that, correct? Do we do we agree as a select board that we approve this? We're going to sign it. Yeah. Okay. I think we do. Do we have some lines to sign below and past? You said do you no. sign on the line, or do you sign below the line, or between the line? Um, I guess the free choice. You can sign whatever you want to, but there's a couple of lines here. Okay. But if you don't feel that's good, you can sign anywhere. You want. Okay. I'll I'll wait till I see the page position. I mean, I'm sensitive to a person that you know would like to be told what to do. You're, well, you're just so, a you're just a sensitive chairman. To me. <laughs> well, I'm trying to help my game because right. I've been accused of the other before. I've, so, I've, I've been you know, told a lot of self evaluation. I heard it. I heard it's about time. <laughs> uh, well, we're supposed to put date on it. So today is probably it'll be two twelve twenty twenty. Oh, oh, dated at oops, it's really long, long talk. It's 23, too. Oops. Dated at East Montpelier. I guess that's going to work. Yeah. Montpelier. Town office. Well, Actually, it looks like it's time below. It's all special conditions. Whoops. <laughs> Gosh. Gotcha. I think they're going to be okay. I think so too, but I'm realizing that I'm screwing up. Can you give us a more detailed monologue when you do that? Uh, well, I'm trying to prevent any kind of mistakes. <laughs> uh -huh. How are you doing there, Seth? Great. Oh, you want to start the next agenda? No, I want to order. I'm, I'm, oh, no, like assets for I'm going to order. I'm gonna order. Let's, let, we can start that. I'm going to order breakfast. <laughs> okay, I just said the next item is the access. I'm on with that. So it's, 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 it's a wise move. So, this is an access permit to move his driveway from Vermont Route 14 to new access off of Hammond Hill Road. And uh, that I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little confused. The, the existing driveway under Route 14 will be there, but it will be the other landowner using it. So it's a driveway on Route 14 that two landowners use it's at this point. Shared driveway, correct. Right. And so one owner. But Mr. Locator will no longer use that as. Right. Right. Okay. So it's, it's not removing an access on Route 14, but it is removing one 
property owners oh, use of that access okay. and thereby removing the traffic on it. And I think it's a good idea in general to have access to properties off of roads like Hammett Hill rather than roads like Route 14. So I'm I'm in favor of it. Yeah, I'm a little curious to know what access is. Is there a map here? Yes. yes. Yeah. Since I'm bad off and down in the hill. You sure do. Regularly. Oh, I see. Kind of a bank right there. And food bank. Guthrie has to officially sign the permit. Yeah. And verbally um, yeah. approve it. Right, there must be a way to do it. <laughs> Sounds right to me. You have the original permit there set also on top of the one packet as yeah, and what I'm going to ask what is DRD? So that's so deep. I mean, I own the land across the road. I thought it was. That is so deep. I look at that. Yeah. Um, so it can go either place. Is that? Uh, no, typically with DRB, like if someone's doing a subdivision, would go to the DRB, but the uh, curb cut still comes with select. Oh, yeah. Um, I think because you're it's talking about on hand and hold it. the top of the okay. road. Yeah. They, yeah. You know, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I had no objection. Anybody else? No. No. We need a motion. I move to approve permit number 24-0-001, curb cut application for Hammett Hill Road, with the discontinuation of the access uh, of that property to Route 14. I'll second it. Oh, I thought that was really good. No, he oh, no, that's right here. Sorry about that. It's all right. I'll second it. They're all the same to me. Um, second. Second? Thank you. Any further discussion about the access permit? Mm -hmm. All the data, please say aye. 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, next thing on our agenda are warrants. Yeah, right here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We lost our audience. We bored, we bored them to death. <laughs> the last one just left. Uh, but you're not considering all the people who are watching this on replay sometime in the future in Berger. All of them. Yes. Uh, future viewers will salute you.
Any objection to starting the town administrative report while we're reviewing the field side watch? It's one of your wiser moves of the evening. Okay. No, no, no. no objections. Okay. So, what did you have for us, Tina? Um, well, there, you have the only permit application that has come in since your last meeting. And then the only other thing I want to let you guys know is I'm working on updating all the town's job descriptions um, and looking through them. They're quite old. The town treasurer job description was never updated for the conversion of the position to full time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have one. It has a draft watermark on it. It was never finalized. So um, one of the things I have one, wanted to do was uh, implement a performance review process. But if you do not have good job descriptions, you cannot review performance. So um, in general, this is something we just we need to get cleaned up. Um, I have the latest VLCT so, template. Excuse me, I just want to make sure that we're still okay with our participants here because I don't see our camera up there. Ruby, what, what's going on? Everybody's here. Everybody there is there on your Okay. Oh, it's just with the camera on, on the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay, the camera up there is on. Yeah. Okay, could we turn it back on just so people, if anybody tunes in, they can see that? Is that something you can do? I'm not sure. Okay. No, you know what? I put it off the corner. Ah, okay. Connection here. A hardware issue. Oh, we'll see if it brings it back up or not. Yeah, okay. Um, no, so anyway, no. it's something that needs to be done because we do not have a clear set of job descriptions. And it's, uh, I had not realized that the treasurer's job description was not updated when the new position was converted to full time. And so um, 2015 is the last day on that. And that was the job description the position of hired. So. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any feedback, concerns. I mean, anything I draft, I will then bring to you. Yeah. Um, no, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We did not realize they were out. I did not realize. I will not speak yeah. for other people. Yeah. I didn't realize they were outdated. Rosie told me apparently it was by design. It was discussed to not update the treasurer job description when the position was hired. And she didn't give me the rationale behind why. Okay. Um, but. Oh, I think because we saw uh, maybe mingling that position with an mm -hmm. is why we didn't update that. Yeah. That's very good for you, though. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, the meeting schedule, I'm just looking at my ticket. It's going to conflict with April 15th. Um, so, I think. Uh, yeah, not that till 16 minutes. So anyway, we can move that meeting. <laughs> How does everyone think about the next April 22nd? How's that look? Um, is, so is that okay? If it's a Monday, it's probably just as. Yeah, I mean, just the next Monday. Right? No issue. Let me just double check. Just my Zoom didn't work very well. And, That's a good one. In case you have to bring your tax to the IRS, you'll have to be free to. to... Yeah, no, that works fine. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're going to do. That works good for me. She knew you good with that? Everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 22nd. Yep. It is Earth Day and Passover. The 22nd. Yeah. I'll bring the bots in. Good. All right. Um, nothing else? I got to do this paperwork here. Nothing under other business. Now I have something. What's that? I think you should have said it in the front first. You need a meeting. I don't remember what it was. 
I wouldn't have one. I should have mentioned before. Okay. 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 Well, motion to adjourn. Second. Do you think that's appropriate? The one, we, we can vote again. We don't have to vote for it. It doesn't have to be affirmative vote. Well, you know, you think that's right? Then we go on. No, just a little levity. It's, it wasn't, it's, it's, this was like a <laughs> vanilla. <laughs> this was just <laughs> one. <laughs> Not a vanilla yeah, meeting. It wasn't exactly, a, exactly. Other, than, other than dead people. Other than vanilla. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so those are all attacks. I just want to say the person that was supposed to be there. The term, yeah. It's very confusing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Let's keep this until the yeah. we're, we're, still, we're, we're still recording. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. record. okay. I'm just saying the reason that I wanted this on the agenda was for so long because. Okay. Uh, I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aye. All right. All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now you can cut it off.